world class player as someone who could leave that club and go and get in anyone else's team. I think he could have gone for a good five, six years of his career. We're talking about a Man United player going to America at 31, 32 years of age. Rangers um, and Celtic joining the English football pyramids. Where would you be on that? You can't have any sympathy for any manager who gets sacked. This is episode eight of Soonest and Silent. There you go. Soonest and Silent. Happy with that. So don't you think it sounds better? Well, I have to admit, there's a ring to it, and I'm very happy if it makes you feel better. Soonest because sounds I know more. I know that the most interesting subjects to you are the ones about yourself. Mm. And I know that you need this validation and benediction by going first. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy to fly in the face of all the market figures. And all the, the demographics, the and all the intelligence figures. behind Reese, like Simon, and Sunes, me. and let it be right, Sunes and go Simon. On um, I was going to bring it up on the last episode we did, but we've carried it over to this one. Wayne Rooney, obviously, he comes. What, what, first of all, what do you think of him? Ad infinitum, a world class a player. player. Yeah. My definition, I think you know, of a world class player is someone who could leave that club and go and get in anyone else's team. And there's very few players can do that. I think he could have done for a good five, six years of his career. But top, what he, top player, but, but, warrior, but, great technician. Um, and I'll say this, athlete, athlete. I, I'm, yeah, real deal. Do you think he got, do you think he did it as, when well, I know this is, sounds like a ridiculous sort of <laughs> story question, given the fact he's Man United's record goal scorer. And, and was England's. And in, was England's. But do you think, because there's a part of me that thinks he didn't, and it's because he went early and pretty much finished earlier than I would have anticipated, and the physicality surrounding him, do you think he, do you think he hit the heights that he could have hit as a player? Well, his records, his goalsman records would suggest that, and trophies he won. I, I um, you know, I'm, I don't know if there's stories about him and, and, and um, maybe not looking after himself as well as he should have done, but... I think for the vast majority of his, his peak years, it, it didn't have any impact on. But he's gone, he went to America, when he went to America when he's 30, I mean, what's he now, 36, 37, 36, 36. So he's been in management for two, two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And before that, he was in America for two years. So we're talking about a Man United player going to America at 31, 32 years of age. That's why I make well, the observation. Well, there still is some life in him, because as far as I know, he didn't get any sort of knocks. I think he was fine in that respect. His choice. His choice, maybe, um, I cannot speak for him, maybe he was at Man United for over a decade, wasn't he? And maybe I thought, this is it, I'm ready for something completely Longer different. Longer than that, I think, wasn't it? Completely, over a decade. Yeah, I was, yeah. Maybe he yeah. just felt he was ready for something completely different. But I, I, as a player, you would take him every day of the week. Have you met him? Yeah. What would mm. you make of him? I can't, I can't get my head I, around him. I, because I watch him in the media and it doesn't seem like he can hold a sentence together. And I listened to him and he's gotten cross and got really with Jim about a couple of things that apparently I've said and got all nasty about it, which goes with the territory, I guess, and people should perhaps get thicker skins. But but what kind of fellow is he? I've, I've been in his company. Brian Robson made a movie three, four years ago and I went up to Manchester and I was in the company of other Man United players and he was there with his wife. He was charming, she was charming. That's what mm. I can tell you. I don't speak as you find, right? I don't profess to know him, but liked him. And, you know, humble, quietly spoken. And his wife was absolutely delightful as well. So that's it. I don't profess to know him. Yeah, yeah. What did you think about, I mean, obviously he's been sacked recently at Birmingham. And I thought I did think it was a ludicrous appointment, Graham. I don't know what you thought. I don't see, I mean, if you were, if you were a manager of Birmingham, right? not that you'd be the manager of Birmingham, but if you were the manager of Birmingham, and you were, your team was in a top six in a championship and it was all right, and someone comes along that's got a 27% win record everywhere they've gone, and most recently in the MLS, which is not the oh. most competitive of leagues, you'd not be too impressed with it, would you? No, I think the choice of going to Birmingham, Birmingham and you know, you know you've been in football, Birmingham yeah. has the potential to be a biggish club in the second city. They say that forever, don't they? Yeah, I know. Ever since I've been in football. But, you know, it's not a biggish club with a, you know, in Birmingham, big population, lots of chimney pots. So the potential to be a lot bigger than they are. 
let's say. Um, and they've been going well by their standards in recent history. And then you sack that manager. The new man coming in, whether it was Wayne Rooney or anywhere else, has to do well. And it didn't happen for them. Now, why he got the job, I think this is how we, and I wrote this in my Daily Mail column, I believe Wayne has an enormous following on social media platforms. Mm -hmm. And the Americans see that as attractive to promoting Birmingham City. So they went for Wayne. Um, Wayne had to hit the ground running and it didn't happen for him. And it, I know you'll want to ask me, why not? Or what makes a good manager? I gave up years ago, two decades ago, three decades ago, trying to, trying to pick, having been a manager and worked with players, you think, definitely going to be a top manager. Definitely going to be a top manager. Mm -hmm. And it didn't happen for them. Two names spring to mind automatically. Ray Wilkins and Terry Butcher. Didn't happen for them. So I gave up a long time ago. Did you think that about Ray? Yeah. Because I didn't. When I, I mean, well, I, maybe it's like I saw Ray at a later stage in his life, but I, Ray was always never controversial. There, there's the answer. Later stage in his life. Yeah, I mean... Because okay. he did have some issues as he... As he well, I know that. That's not what I was referring to. It, but but oh, it, when, right. it was, when it was Dennis's assistant at Millwall, and I, Ray would never... I mean, as a player, I really liked Ray. And I grew up as a, watching... As a guy. As, um, and I liked him as a bloke, absolutely. See, I'm, I'm, not, just looking at, I'm, not, I'm not, not just looking at their, their CV and in their, in their playing career. I had them both at Glasgow Rangers, and I'm looking at them in, in the dressing room. And their leaders. And, yeah, yeah. And the way they're respected by other people and other big players in that dressing room thing. And they're, they're going to make great managers. And that didn't happen for them. So, you know, a big player, and, and you can talk about... As yet, it's not happened for Frank. As yet, it's not happened for Wayne Rooney. And as yet, it's not happened for Steven Gerrard. But that's not to say it won't. I, um, I don't know. I think you need a large slice of luck with the job you get at a particular time um, to get you going, make things happen for you. And then you have, some, you have some money in the bank going forward. But for Wayne, coming from the MLS, not pulling up trees there and then coming into a club that we're going... Well, really well, compared to the recent what history. Done previously, yeah, or recently, in the recent yeah. history, yeah. and uh, not hitting the ground running was an issue. But we all got gut feels, Graham. We always have gut feels. It's like, you know, I, I, I watch Duncan Ferguson go to Forest Green Rovers, and I'm looking at it again with mm. due respect. I mean, I look, you look like you borrowed your scarf from Del Vince, but mm. I couldn't see that relationship working, and I couldn't see certain things. And, and it's easy to be negative, isn't it, all the time? Because if, even if you get it wrong, people forget that because the guy's successful when it's often is only often if you're right then people go oh you're a soothsayer you've seen the future but I because of my perception of, of Wayne and the things he's got himself involved in both as a player and as a manager I look at that and say I'm not sure I'm not, I think that's a great player I'm not sure it's a leader of men mm -hmm. and that's the difference isn't it if you're a football manager if you were if you were if you were now coming out of playing the soonest career right smashed it at Liverpool Gone to Italy, Sampdoria, gone to... Did you go Rangers as a player manager? Or yes. Going, you, put aside that question then. You were coming out of um, um, Liverpool and Sampdoria and you're now being offered managerial jobs. Do you think... You, you talk about the luck element of managers. I think, you know, you make the right decisions and you, you often get luck coming with it, don't you? Would you feel... Because you've mentioned Lampard and you've mentioned Gerrard and you've mentioned Rooney and it hasn't happened for them yet. If you were doing it now and your time had come again, do you think you would have made the pathway that you made? Because you go from Rangers, you win things at Rangers, go to Liverpool. It bumps up and down at Liverpool for you a little bit. But notwithstanding that, you still have a career where you go off and manage a lot of other cups. I'm on, I'm on, if you were in this modern day well. now and you, and, 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 and you didn't get success straight away, do you think that would have been, that would have been your lot? I, I can't. I'll look back and where did I get a bit of luck? You know, I went to Rangers at a time when the English clubs were banned from Europe and we could match the English... The English clubs and transfer fees and wages. And that's why I had four or five of the England team up there. That was an enormous slice of luck. I mean, I, I had eight jobs. And when I look, I had next to zero due diligence with any of the jobs I took. Because I, I, I was that confident in myself being a young man. When you're young, you're fearless. I can mm. do that. I'll change that. I'll make that work. Um, if I had my time again, I would do a lot more due diligence when I was offered a job. That where? Why? Give us All the all of them. Yeah, but which, I mean, uh, you, that, and, that, that, that implies, Gray, that, that well, some of those jobs were not the right jobs for you to take. No, they weren't. Well, so what? Like, where are you going? Well, even, 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 well, and others, and others. 
Right. Well, let's I start could to... see you and Rupert Lowe together, though. You no, can. I can. I think you'd make a nice little what menage a deux afternoon tea society. Yeah. yeah. Depends, so what? So what due diligence would you have done? Crocky. Okay. So you say I would have done more due diligence. Right? Even even. What does that? What does that mean? Then? I'll look back in the then in, in my first job. When I was offered it, it was a yes. It was a team of supporters, a kid. Rangers. So yeah. Yeah. Did I take into consideration that they won the league for nine years? Did I take into consideration that gates were down to sixteen thousand instead of forty odd thousand? None of that. I, I, I'm young. You're fearless when you're young. Right. If I had been offered that job 10, 15 years later, I might have gone, mm, maybe not. Sure. But when you're young, you just head first. Second job, Liverpool. I turned, turned it down twice, said yes the third time. And again, I didn't. So you do, did think about it, didn't you? I, but I didn't. But I, the reason I said no to the Liverpool one, you don't get a job at a football club because things are going well. Well, I was going to say. So I'd created something at Rangers which was going to last a good few years if no one tickled it. So Walter got the job and continued the success but with the nucleus of the team we had when I was there so that was something that I should have taken on board and said wait a minute you don't get a job anywhere because things are going well at a football club you've done that this time you've got a really good squad of players and there's a lot of life left in them I should have said at that moment in time I'm not going to take a Liverpool job but I'm going to step back from managing Rangers I didn't I don't think I've been terribly smart in my decisions about what clubs I've chosen but these are huge opportunities without without blowing smoke up your ass. These are, I would have got offered that. You've got again. one that you support and one you excelled at. Yeah, right? but I would have got offered that further down the road. Not a time when they were you know, on post Hillsborough and the right. group of players were a wee bit older. Right. And um, what do you think? They would ideally want. What do you think of the. Um, I'm not against this, and I was not against it when I was in football, but I think there should be a premium paid for it about the idea of Rangers um, and Celtic joining the English football pyramids. Where would you be on that? 100%. They would do very well down here. No, I'm not, not about how they do, about the principle of it. I personally would like to see it happen. I'm a Why? Rangers supporter because... You're a Scotsman, aren't you? interested in patronising yeah, your own yeah, country? Yeah, but we're, I, I, I'm Scottish, but I live in Great Britain. You mean you've come and take the English power? I, I, I came down here. I came... <laughs> I came down here a long, long time ago as a missionary and I did my damnedest to try and right. convert some of the... Um, Heathens. Uh, Philistines, I think the term okay. I was looking for. But I quickly gave up because like, people like yourself were just beyond help. So then I just... Well, became, the kind of help that you can offer then anyway. I just, <laughs> then I just became a mercenary and thought, you know, sod it, I'll just go with the flow. How do you think they'd... I mean, I, I think... I mean, it would kill Scottish football though, wouldn't it? Yeah, but right now... The big two dominate, and there's yeah. no, there's nothing on the horizon that's going to suggest that's going to change. So all the teams could be getting into the Champions League. How did it change before them with Aberdeen? And, and well, Fer him? Fergie was there. I uh, had a really good group of players, if you remember. You know, um, Alex McLeish, Willie Miller, Gordon Strachan, mm -hmm. a really good group. Yeah, they won a fair. European trophy. Yeah. Mark McGee. 84. Mark McGee. McGee Real Madrid yeah. and yeah. Gothenburg. Absolutely. They had some good players. Absolutely. And they won the league as well with Fergie. Um, but, you know, in my lifetime, again, it's always been about Rangers, Celtic, Rangers, Celtic, mm -hmm. Celtic, Rangers, Celtic, Celtic, Celtic. So, so that ain't going to change any time soon. But in, in order for these teams to cross, cross the Rubicon now in Europe, which is where Rangers and Celtic want to pitch themselves, they want to have success, and they're getting flung out of the Champions League on their asses without winning any points, but are the they? The Rangers, can I remind you, two years ago, got to European Cup final. Yeah, Europa. Mm. I'm talking about Champions League, mm. where the real money is. Where the difference is going to be yeah, made. Yeah, when your income from from television circa three million quid, I, to where that. little old Bournemouth, where I live, are getting circa hundred million. Rangers very difficult Celtic. to compete. No, I get it. I understand that. Rangers and Celtic are still getting 60, 80 million pound turnovers from the sheer volume of support they've well, got. But they're 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 clubs that are supported worldwide. So if they were to come out of that league and and be operating down here, you could build a stadium in Glasgow that they could share. Not that they'd want to. For a hundred thousand people, yeah, and, and would still be, there and would still it. be people queuing outside yeah. waiting to get in against the bigger teams when they mm. came to when came to Glasgow. Yeah, I was for it when it when it was when it, when it was originally mooted, but I'm I'm not sure that Rangers and, and Celtic should just walk into the Premier League. 
I'm more inclined to suggest, and it's a difficult one because you've got to work out how it all drops down because you bring two teams in, you're going to have to lose two teams out of the pyramid somewhere. Mm -hmm. Because um, no one's well, going to volunteer from the Premier League to step aside. No, no one's going to volunteer from the Championship. How many teams would vote for those two to come into this league? Depends, Five, maybe six. Depends on the economics Is of that what they Turkey's, bring. Turkey's, Turkey's but, but voting for Christmas. for Christmas. I get it, but 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 there is also if there's an economic return. My 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 outlook was that the the value of Celtic and Rangers, if they came into English football, would would triple. Because of the economics, not just not, I'm not just talking about the, not just talking about the partisan nature of the fan base that's around the world and how sizable these clubs are in the hearts and minds of many different people for a variety of different reasons, whether it's their backgrounds, religious uh, belief systems, or whatever, or just the magnitude of these two clubs, right? But they would still go through the ceiling in terms of economic value because because we're seeing clubs and in the Premier League. They would bring value. They bring enormous. They bring value, but I would I would make them pay 50, 60, 75 million quid each to come in to someone like the Championship. That would give the championship an immediate 150 million pound boost mm -hmm. that would be shared between the clubs, and somewhere along the line you'd find a solution that might let them in. Yeah, I'd, I wouldn't be averse to it. I wouldn't be averse. See, to I always it. felt, even when Sky were the, sort of, the only ones funding the, the football, that if the shine goes off the ball, the Premier League, the shine goes off it, then Rupert Murdoch would. That's an obvious direction they would look in. Mm -hmm. But that that sail that ship has long sailed. Mm -hmm. So now we've moved on a long, long way from that. The way the Premier League has evolved. Books. We've both written books. Mm. I know what made me write my book, but what made you write your book? Or did you write it, Gray? Or did you no, ghost I didn't write it. Did, did you write it? Ghost it. Right. Did you not have a ghostwriter? Oh, I bloody didn't. 137,000 words edited down to 128,000. None of it. <laughs> substantial, authentic, authentic, insightful, engaging. All words what? written about it. Why is it. Why is that not on my bookshelf? What's it called? Be careful what you wish for. Was it? Ah. Well, that's football, isn't it? <laughs> absolutely that right, is it is, huh? That was what yeah. that, that was, that's what that metaphor was absolutely describing mm. it. Be careful what you wish for. What, what made you write your uh, book? I'm well, like, the first one, you know, for the big players today, they, 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 you know, my life story, and they're 21 years old. Could, 21? <laughs> no, no I'm saying that is a story Oh, today. yeah, what do I know? Yeah, yeah, I found my, my answer life morning. story. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 21. Yeah. So I did my first one at the end of, um, come to the end of my, my career at Liverpool. I actually went on Terry Wogan. I actually got on Terry Wogan. Did you? To promote it, yeah. And um, and then I, I did... Uh, How many books you sell? Oh, millions. Liar. Thousands. <laughs> <laughs> and then my last one was the management years, which I enjoyed doing. Um, and Douglas Alexander was ex uh, Sunday Times journalist, right. uh, and, and I felt he did a really good job with that. You know, my take on my years of management, and I look at the game, and that must be six, seven years ago. Mm. I did it. I mean, because there hadn't been when I wrote my I only wrote my book about two years after I left Palace, and that was obviously a difficult situation for me because economically it really hurt me. And, and I didn't want to write a book. And Theo Pafitis, who's one of my best mates, said, write a book, you've got a story, write it. Mm -hmm. There's lots of things and no one's, you were the youngest ever owner of a football club in the world. You were the youngest Premier League club owner. You, you've got lots to say for yourself and there's lots of things that you've experienced. And write this book. And people... Was it cathartic? Did you... No, it was like taking a great in a room. Was you it? didn't feel particularly cathartic. Um, but it, it was... <laughs> for others, yeah. Um, but it was... It was an interesting, because I wrote it. I got a ghostwriter to do it with me. And then I realized that what they were doing was they were creating something which wasn't reflective of my thought process. And it might be because I'm a control freak. It might be because I have very definite views or different standards. And I felt that he couldn't catch the voice that I wanted to have, which was honest and at my own expense as much as anyone else's and probably irreverent and a bit of humor attached to it. And it ended up that he became, the ghostwriter became very valuable to me in terms of researching information mm -hmm. rather than, so I wrote 137,000 words. I didn't settle any scores. Did you ever settle any scores in books? No. It's no. a temptation, though, isn't it? Because there's a few people out there who need to have their heads constant, minds constantly. Yeah. Steve Parrish. Yeah. Is life too short? I know. I know. I, I suppose, because I, I suppose someone told me a while ago that vengeance is like drinking poison and expecting someone else to suffer. Mm. It's a good analogy, though, mm. isn't it? But yeah. it did okay. It won awards. And I'm doing another book now. Also, pictures. you're supposed to say, 
Really? Where that's could I get it from? Yeah. And what's it Lots about? Of pictures. Uh, it's a pictures. colouring book for football managers. <laughs> 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 now I'm doing another book. Right, another book. Go, go on, so if you're, if, you're no, the, if you're the Palace owner today, yeah. what I, what I on the horizon, some big decisions. Hmm? On the, the immediate horizon, some very big decisions. They're not going well at the moment. For Palace owners. For Palace, yeah. Yeah. Well, only... <laughs> I can't, only because, what do you think of the media, Graham? I know you and I, I'm going to go off on a tangent here for a second, because I make this observation all the time and people laugh at it about you in the media, right? Because I don't consider myself to be in the media. I consider myself being involved in the media. I don't consider myself to be part oh. of the media. And my argument would be, okay, I'm in the media, but I don't operate like you do. Mm -hmm. And it's not about being in the media. It's about how you operate in it. Because I sit there and I listen to all the sensational stuff and all the critical mass and all these uninformed voices coming in in the media going, you're going to do this and Man United are going to do this and Man United share price is that and Glazers are going to do this and Radcliffe's going to do this. And the reasons why I say that is because the, the noise is coming behind Palace through the media. So you've asked me, I'm going to answer the question about what I think about Palace and I tend to try and avoid it. Can I just but what do you think in. of the media? Give them six to eight to ten games and they're out the door. Well, I think if we're talking about Palace in particular... And you think that's the media? Yeah, I think it's the pressure they bring to bear. And I think now it's... If we're talking about Palace... You know, money as well, don't it? It's money as well, isn't it? The what, consequences what of... The, the point of, of... Especially in the Premier it's League. the Premier League. If you're losing... Well, even in the Championship, if you start dropping out of divisions because you've got managers that aren't capable of doing their jobs, well, it's twofold. You've got fans in your ear, you've got the media doing their wonderful if, if rah-rah session, the case, and then you've got money and cost implications of things going on. If that is the wrong. case, how sad is it? You know that... People lose their jobs simply because it becomes down to the threat of not getting into the Premier League, the thought, the thought of relegation, when it's not not getting to playoffs. But driven but by hasn't money. It, but hasn't it always been? Hasn't it always no, been? I don't like, think but so. Okay, but isn't the flip side of that argument? And you came out in 2006, finished, right? I wanted you to come to Palace. We had a chat. It didn't work out that way, right? And you've since said, subsequently, that you decided that at that time you don't want to be a manager. Well, you can't deal with what do you call them? Pampered poachers. Poachers. Right, which I'm making you right on. But isn't it just simply because of the beneficiaries of all the money has been the managers Clears. and the players that they've actually changed their own shelf lives mm -hmm. and they've created their own focus by having this the Premier phenomenal League opportunity? The Premier League has driven that more than anything else. The what? The Premier League has driven that more right. than anything else because of the money, the rewards that are earned by being a member of that Premier League. So my argument would be when you, when you say, and so far as it's an argument, um, that the reasons why people get so little time is because they're the victims of the own industry that they're in and they get all yeah. the benefits of it. I, you can't have any sympathy for any manager who gets sacked because, you know, when they sign the contract, they know the rules. They know the rules of the game they're involved in. I've got to hit the ground running. I've got to do well because I've got 10 games. I've got 10 games. Um, and that's the law of engagement, right? That's the that, rules of that, engagement. I sign the contract... And from the day you sack me, I think most of the contracts are worded in a way from when you sack me, you've got to pay me a year's money. So on a three-year deal, but if you get yeah. sacked after 10 weeks... It's a one-year so deal. Yeah. It's one you do economically. Yeah. So I think that is... And no one can have any sympathy for them because the kind of money these boys get paid, mm. it's enormous. And they get involved... Most of them get involved right away with another job. I mean, what do you take of the situation at Sunderland right now? Michael Beale. I can't, I can't, if Michael Bill was the answer, I'm trying to work out what the question was. It's like one of those where, if you think something's a good idea, the best advice is to go to sleep on it. And if you wake up in the morning and you still think it's a good idea, then you should go back to bed. I'm trying to work out where Michael Bill came into the equation. I think, I, I think he's a bluffer and I think you think he's a bluffer as well. I'm assuming that, that Don't you? You, you will get bleeped lots of times no. when this goes out to air. It's not allowed. It's not a. Oh, the f bombs allowed to stand. No, no, it's it? fine. It's not a lacking in my vocabulary. It's it's punctuation. Is it? It's extra. Bleep. Extra uh, focus on the emphasizing a point. And that's precisely what it is. Mm. Going back to my question, you think Michael? You think Michael I, Bill's a bluffer? Don't I you? think. Um, or put in. It's been very, which one is it? Bluffer or put in? It's been very lucky to land the jobs he's landed. You know, I know that um, there's a feeling in Glasgow that he was he was a good coach. Yeah, the Glasgow Rangers thing, it, with Stephen Gerrard, and then making the jump from that to being a manager is is it's a very different job. It's like me in my in my um, career. 
big player, played for big clubs, captain of country, captain of Liverpool. This management oh, could be easy. Yeah. 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 Well, was it boring you then? No, no, I no, it was I wonderful. Could, I could go on. I know we're back on the favourite subject, I could, you. I could go <laughs> on. I, I, I could go on, but I won't. Um, but the point I wanted to make, I'm not a career. This management will be easy, but it's not. There's yeah. nothing. Different school setting it. Very. Mm. So, so, so Michael. Well, you've got to deal with the grown ups. You've got to be it absolutely keeps me awake focused. At night thinking you and I could have been a team. We've discussed this. And I'm not, going, I'm not going to praise you anymore when I said I thought you'd be wonderful at it. So you have another go? Never too late. Come on, mate. Can you imagine the mayhem that we would create? Yeah. <laughs> right. That's it for this episode. By the way, don't think it when I noticed that you showed no interest whatsoever in the, what I was going to be writing about in my new book. Well, I'll be what about you, same. mate? It wasn't about your uh, appearances uh, on no, Top Sport. You scarped after six I'll weeks. I'll ask the question now. No, too late. How many paragraphs are dedicated to me? Things Simple not to, question. Things not to do. <laughs> things <laughs> not to, to avoid. <laughs> avoid. Right, that's it. See you next time we're out.